You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you, as you can see, with another episode of No More Future. And as always, I've got with me the creator, Sedge. Hello. It's always good to have him with us, folks. But yes, we're about to pick right up after we had talked with Bradbury from the FBI. Yes, Bradbury from the FBI. <laughs> ah, alrighty. Let's start. You'd be lying if you said that the St. Bernard's words haven't made an impact on you. Whether through fear, doubt, or simply through making good points, he's managed to make you doubt everything you thought you knew about yourself and your circumstances in just short of 20 minutes. Things that you thought were certain or that you at the very least had faith in now look like mere dreams or delusions. You can't tell what you're supposed to believe in now, or even what you're supposed to think. Bar one thing. Go fuck yourself. You've been waiting to say that for quite a while now. Perhaps it's wrong to be so blunt before a government official, especially one in the same room as Harlan over there. But you cannot bring yourself to care now. It was high time someone put that vitriol-spewing dog back in his place, and you weren't going to wait a moment further for that to happen. The dog, for what it's worth, simply raises an eyebrow at your outburst once more, hardly feeling intimidated by your sudden display of emotion. Excuse me? You heard that right. I've said that before and I'll say it again. I'm done indulging this nonsense. All you've done ever since breaking into my house is dismiss and insult me for the mere sake of it, and you think that's enough to convince me to aid you? I don't care how important you think this whole thing is. You can bring all your questions to others if you really care all that much. Uh, that's rather bold of you to say. Will you truly be of the same mind come the time when reality proves me right? If that time ever comes, you'll feel like a fool for getting me pissed instead of explaining your case to me like a regular person. As if I was a regular person, rather. Now get out. You're wasting your time. Silence. For the first time since Bradbury stormed into your apartment, true silence envelops the room. Neither the agents standing guard by the door nor the synthetic brooding in the corner are making any noises, merely giving you weird looks as you defiantly stand before Bradbury's inscrutable mug. The big dog himself takes quite a while to answer as well. He merely continues scratching his chin before you, seemingly pondering on your words and how to reply, until his pensive look suddenly breaks into a cocky grin, and then a deafening cackle. W what's so funny? I said get out! You really misunderstood your position to the very end, didn't you, Isaac? Do you truly believe yelling at me is going to get you anywhere? Get us anywhere? His expression darkens considerably in the span of a second, as, devil as devilish chortles continuously escape his lips like demons from a portal to hell. You notice Harlan leave his cozy spot in the corner and start heading in your direction, cracking his metallic joints as he does so. This conversation is over when I say it's over. And believe me, we evidently have much to discuss still. You retreat as much as you can while the dog steadily advances towards you, backed up by the large synthetic behind him. Y you don't scare me! I don't need to scare you, I just need to convince you. And believe me, I can be very persuasive when I... Hello? Anyone in there? All of a sudden, a familiar female voice starts shouting from beyond the entrance to your apartment, surprising everyone present. The entire room freezes if you, as you figure out the identity of the woman that's beckoning for you. But Mary? How, what are you doing here? In spite of your alarm tone, Mary's response is calm and condescending. Hey, I'm gonna check up on you is all. Is it fine if we come in? You turn to face the dog and his bodyguard once again for a second. The former's busy adjusting his ties if nothing happened, while the latter has quietly returned to his spot near the wall. Despite that, however, the tension of the room is all but gone, and you can tell that Bradbury is merely waiting for something to happen before resuming his talk with you once again. I don't know if it's the right time to... Wait, we? You didn't realize there was someone else outside. Who could that be? Yeah, me and him. All of a sudden, the door swings open with a crack, seeing the two agents guarding it toppling onto the ground like ragdolls. Mary enters the room with the confidence of a student who just aced her test, followed by a viridescent drake with a grim look on his face. Mary! Jasper! After all the stress you've had to endure, even the sight of the mean-looking lizard is enough to relieve you of some of your anxiety. Of course, the feeling is hardly mutual. That's Mr. Morgan to you, android. Circumstances haven't changed that. Ignore him. He's just a little cranky in the morning. 
We had a commotion, we thought it'd be wise to check up on you. Still, who could have expected all this? You're not sure how they supposedly heard everything from all the way in New Relay. However, details and specifics are far from your biggest concern at present. All that matters is that you clearly don't have to brave Bradbury all on your own anymore. Jasper inspects the room from top to bottom with his gaze, his aura of seriousness never faltering even for an instant. Judging by that fire in his eyes, he's clearly not pleased by what he sees, and neither is the Siamese woman on his, by his side. My, my. A party so early in the morning? That has got to be breaking a rule or two. I knew the FBI hosts some killer parties, but I never imagined organized one at someone else's house. I must admit, I'm impressed. The FBI agent seems hardly impressed by the two's appearance, opting to meet them head-on with, with a sarcastic smile and a mocking tone. Oh, well, well. Look who's come to say hi. The leaders of Pandora and the synthetic department themselves. How oh, strange to see you two of you outside of my office. It's been so long since we've had one of our chats over your funny little pastimes. Oh, don't act all cocky of me, Ray. We have as much as you claim to be, we would have expected you to come through those doors a long time ago. Meanwhile, the FBI's sticking their nose where they don't belong. Now that's something you can see coming from a mile away. Hm. I suppose it feels I'm guilty for stealing your job. After all, spying on poor Isaac here is your prerogative for a change. Mary looks ready to retort once again, but is quickly stopped by her stern superior. Are you two going to stop squabbling like chickens anytime soon? We didn't come here to play around like chicken or like children at the park. Neither did you. Tell us when the world you're doing here. Unauthorized, I might add, for reporting to your superiors a breach of contract. Even when being shouted at by a man as frightening as Jasper, Bradbury remains surprisingly cool and composed. Ah, oh, Mr. Morgan. If you want to call my superiors, you only need to ask. With a wide grin on his face, Bradbury begins to pretend as though his right hand is a smartphone, which he then holds close to his ear as it annoyingly rings. Oh? Oh, really? He uses his left hand to cover his fictitious phone's microphone as he turns to face Jasper once again, barely containing his laughter as he does so. It's for me. Very funny. I'm sure your buddies in Congress love that joke. Oh, please. Don't be so serious all the time. It's bad for your neck fluff. The dog drops the comedic act and returns to his more familiar professional facade. I'm merely exercising my supervisory duties by checking up on little Liza here is all. Nothing more, nothing less. Supervising a synthetic is our duty, Bradbury. And supervising you is mine, Mr. Morgan. Wait, what? What's he talking about? Before you can ask for an explanation, Bradbury's already well into his response to Jasper. Routine inspections are nothing new, as you're particularly well aware. Just because we never did them on synthetics before doesn't mean we don't have the authority to do so. I assure you this is all perfectly legal. And I mentioned quite understandable, in light of recent events. Jasper unceremoniously raises an eyebrow as he realizes what the dog's referring to. You saw the video. Of course I did. Who didn't? A despicable affair, really. Those officers truly overstep their boundaries, don't you think? Travel over protocol, and they have full the forces for assault. Jasper definitely expect that kind of response, that's for sure. He likely didn't foresee Bradbury to side with you on that whole debacle, and neither did you for that matter. Not much way the Bureau can do about that, sadly, aside from checking up the poor victim and making sure that they are alright. Surely you understand why I did that. Isn't that right, Isaac? You try to avoid meeting the man's gaze as he inquisitively looks your way, instead keeping your eyes fixed on the ground below. You could say many, many things right now for sure. With Bradbury and Harlan both still in the room, you feel as though your silence is more important than ever. Luckily, Mary quickly picks up your distress without a need for you to voice it. She begins to rail into Bradbury harder than ever before, much to the man's shallow surprise. He's doing wonderfully, thank you. And he'll do even better once he doesn't have to see your ugly mug around anymore. Jasper does his best to keep the furious-looking woman at bay while he argues with the agent in a, in a milder, though certainly not friendlier, manner. If you truly did come here to check up on our synthetic, then I'd see you spend more than enough doing that as of now. I would advise you and your entourage to leave the premises effective immediately, before we have to report you for trespassing on private property. You hesitantly wait for Bradbury's response, 
for him to turn to face them once again with a devious look in his eyes, ranting that he'll never let either of them leave. However, much to your surprise, none of that ever comes to happen. Very well. I don't see any reason why I should stay any longer, either. With a flick of his fingers, his entire team begins heading out the door, taking the long way around the drake and the cat standing befuddled in the middle of the room. You're leaving? Just like that? Of course. That's what he wanted, wasn't it? After all, we'll have plenty of opportunities to discuss things again in the future. I can afford you a little rest while you pop with everything we've talked about so far. Holland gives you a final evil stare as he comes near you, but ultimately leaves without making a fuss, and merely shaking his head in annoyance as he does so. Mary is, of course, not very pleased. You are n and twice with our consent, Bradbury. Making promises you can't keep again, Dr. Shiles, please. I'm not surprised it doesn't come from the director of the synthetics department. You spot Mary tightening her fist as Bradbury approaches the exit himself, a wide grin on his mug once again. Just before he can cross the threshold between your apartment and the hallway outside, however, he turns to face the three of you a final time. Before I go... What now? There is one last question I want to ask, actually. The man's expression becomes surprisingly serious all of a sudden, putting all three of you on edge. We received reports of some disturbances around these parts late last night. Some people started to fight a fair distance away from here. Remains of a baseball bat found near the scene are cool enough that a criminal is employed. Deadly force against each other. There were no bodies have currently been found. Naturally, we had the Bureau taking us very seriously. Uh, given like living nearby, I don't want to ask Isaac if he knew anything about this. You're too scared to say a word. You're worried that anything you say may and will be used against you if you aren't careful. After some time, however, Jasper forces your hand. Well, do you? Judging from the impatience in his tone, he expects you to answer immediately. Well, I did hear some noises last night while I was coming home, but nothing that resembled a fight, just cranky door hinges and the like. You never lied harder before in your life, you reckon. If you were still human, your heart would probably burst straight out of your chest right now. Luckily, your android nerves are cold enough that none of the people present have anything to object to your account. Yeah. Well, that's that, I guess. Thank you for your assistance. We'll continue investigating the incident, and we'll be sure to you. That said... Bradbury turns towards the hallway once again, giving you one last look before leaving you for good. Okay, Isaac. <laughs> With that, the man closes the door behind him, leaving the three of you alone in your living room. As you hear his footsteps growing lighter and lighter, so does the heavy burden you feel weighing on your shoulders. Is he... gone? Seems like it, at least. Thank goodness. You have no idea how relieved I am. The things he... Dr. Shelley, I need the whole building EMP within the next two minutes. The suddenness of Jasper's command is enough to shock you to your core, so much so that you don't know how you're even meant to reply. Luckily, it appears as though Mary knows just what to do in this situation. No need to hurt me around. I was around before you even thought about it. I'll be back before you know it. Without explaining herself any further, the scientist runs out of the runs out the door with the speed of a cheetah. You're not sure where she's going, but you th but you thought you saw her fiddling with a strange device she must have taken out of her pocket as she left. Seeing as though you're not going to get any explanations from the cat, you may as well try and get something out of the drake. Now, hold on, EMP? What's going on? Electromagnetic pulse. A shockwave. Don't really need to explain what that is as well. No, I know what an EMP is, but I still don't know why you'd need one all of a sudden. Jasper scoffs at your inquiry, evidently unhappy to answer your queries, which, to him, must equate to those of a kindergartner. Do you really think those morons came to drink tea and play board games? There are likely dozens of hidden cameras recording us as we speak, placed all throughout the apartment, and probably the rest of the building as well, if I had to guess. You have no idea how the thought never occurred to you before. As ridiculous as it seems, you feel as though you understand today's events a little better. You understand why those agents bothered to refurbish your apartment while they were here well before you woke. 
All they ever wanted was for you to lower your guard and say something incriminating that they could record. I see you understand now. Good. We can't afford to leave all these illegally placed devices lying in place. That's why we're going to overcharge the mag reactor powering the building and disable all electronics in the two mile radius the hard way. It's the only way to be certain nobody will eavesdrop on our next conversation. Wait, you're going to overcharge the mag reactor? Y you can do that? You don't know what exactly that entails, but you cannot imagine that being very good or very legal. Can they even do that? As far as you know, this whole building is the property of another corporation. Can they really get away with breaking someone else's tech so brazenly? Of course we can. What do you take us for? Well, that's reassuring. Or it is, until another thought strikes you. But, w w wait, if you disable all electronics, what's gonna happen to... You? Mary greets you with some confident words of reassurance as she returns from her duties. In her hand lies the same device she pulled from her pockets earlier, hovering her finger over its screen. You'll be fine, you can rest assured of that. Even a lightning strike wouldn't be enough to pierce through your defenses. Though, you might still feel a little tickled. You realize that she's readying herself to activate a device a little too late to stop her. H hold on, a at least give me, at least let me get out of here for... You felt the entire building tremble slightly, as if it had been caught in the midst of an earthquake. The lights briefly flickered off and on repeatedly while a surge of invisible electricity coursed through the building, likely wrecking everything in its path. You check yourself all over to ensure that the EMP left no lasting damage on you. Other than a light tremble in your legs, it looks like you survived the ordeal wholly unscathed. Dear Lord, what was was that it? Indeed it was. I should take care of our little intruder problem. You take a swift look around the apartment, where the damage caused by the EMP is most evident. There seems to be a few broken light bulbs in the kitchen near the stove, and your computer and mini-fridge look utterly fried. But that's all as far as the living room is concerned, surprisingly enough. You have expected the entire room to go up in flames as all the devices Bradbury installed in your sleep blew up from under the couch or behind a poster. But so far, everything looks mostly in order. They must have hidden their toys even better than you thought. However, with the entire complex having been fried from within, you don't expect they'll prove useful either way. It relieves you to know that those people won't be allowed to spy on you quite so easily anymore. However... Isaac? Everything okay? Y yeah, I'm alright. I was just noticing all that damage that the EMP caused us all. If this is what it did to my place, I can't even begin to imagine what it did to everyone else's. I know you were trying to protect me from Bradbury, but I can't help but feel as though we roped too many innocent people into this mess as a result. You're especially worried for your friends a few blocks up, the last people you wanted to involve, and yet they'll likely suffer because of this all the same. Oh, don't worry. We've got them covered. Indeed. We'll be reimbursing residents of all the damages in no time, and let Mary come up with some ridiculous explanation and justify the blast. These people didn't deserve this annoyance, like Wendy, this much. But we'll see to it that they're taken care of, nonetheless. The Drake's words are more than enough to put your mind at ease. You definitely didn't expect him to care so much about the locals' needs, especially after how arrogantly he dismissed yours just yesterday. However, it's nice to know that he had everything planned out from the start, at least. It's like Daphne and Apollo are in good hands, though you'll likely end up apologizing to them for the trouble either way. Well then, with Raptor's toys taken care of and your mind at ease, you can finally tell me what in the ever-loving fuck is going on. He turns to face you personally, his eyes angrier than you've ever seen them. You have three seconds to tell me everything about what happened yesterday night before I get really angry. L last night? Don't play dumb with me. I know something happened. It was clear as day on this fool's face. Mary turns to face the other way, avoiding Jasper's gaze as if it were the plague. Luckily it didn't seem as though Bradbury noticed it. But I did. So start talking for it to us both of you into the elevator shaft. Looks like there's really no way out of this one, though you fear for both your safety and your friends. The only thing you can do is come clean about your actions. Well, where do I start? Uh... I'm the beginning. We have plenty of time to go through everything. Alright, I'll be as thorough as I can be. I was walking home last night. I then spent some time at their place and returned home soon after. When I woke up, those lunatics were already in the living room. That's all I can remember. Well, mostly everything you remember. You took a few creative liberties with your account of the event so as to try and minimize Jasper's anger. 
Some things you only gloss over briefly, like Natalie's involvement in the whole affair, while others you avoided mentioning entirely, especially towards the end. You don't know how useful it'd be to mention that shade from yesterday to the pair to the pair before you, given that you're still wholly unsure of whether it was truly there or not, until you're certain. It's probably best to keep that detail to yourself. Your decision was clearly sound, as even your partial recounting of the events is enough to send the Drake into a fit of rage. You knew about all this. I was I appointed for me immediately. His rage towards the Siamese cat is practically palpable. Even yesterday, he never quite reached these levels of barely contained fury. How was I supposed to inform you? You woke asleep sleep by the time I found you. I said don't play dumb with me. You suddenly forget emails and notifications exist. You could have alerted me of this as soon as I woke up and said let me discover this in the midst of that face-to-face -face of Bradbury. I assume you didn't intend keeping me in the dark about this affair entirely. Judging by the annoyed look on the feline's face, that might have actually been her plan all along. What was she even thinking? Oh, relax already. The situation is not as dire as you think it is. Perhaps made up under the clear to immediately suspects the fight broke out last night. There's no reason to be so agitated. Dr. Shelley, you've been dealing with the FBI for even longer than I have. Are you truly so sick in the head that you still haven't learned anything about them? The FBI never suspects anything. They know. If they were sure Isaac was involved in an incident, they would have never bothered bringing it up to us in the first place. The only reason why we didn't leave the building in handcuffs is because they don't have any solid evidence to prove it. The Drake's words, though certainly frightening, are also somewhat confusing. Wait, if they don't have any proof, that means we're good, right? Jesper focuses his rage on you once again now that you've given him the perfect opportunity to do so. You really think the FBI, of all things, cares about proof? Proof only matters to the citizens, the justice system, the government, and so on. To those who actually care, or should care, about legality and accountability. But for the feds. For them, proof is just trifling paperwork. A laughter thought they can present to their superiors so nobody questions their involvement or actions. If they know you've done something wrong or worth ruining your life over, and they do, they will do everything in their power to destroy you. Doesn't matter what they have to do in order to achieve this goal. And do you know who must protect you from that? Who's going to cover up for your reckless, idiotic decision? Us, of course. Mary does her best to defend you, in spite of how little ammunition she has at her disposal. Don't be so harsh on him. I like there was a fan himself and I know some bystander from a band of crooks. We should be celebrating that, not harassing him for it. Sadly, it seems like Jasper won't be so easily swayed. You think context or good motives will be enough to protect him? Have you been living under a rock for the past 40 years? Those things have been irrelevant for ages now, as both of you should be well aware of. Or are you truly nothing more than overgrown infants? The man is right, as much as it pains you to admit. You had those same thoughts this morning as well, while you were mulling over last night's events. You thought you'd be safe because there was no chance that those thugs would have confessed to their crime. But now that the FBI knows you were there trying to defend yourself? Maybe this is the perfect time to remind you both that self-defense is illegal. The law is quite clear. Anybody who commits acts of violence for any reason is immediately judged a criminal and sentenced to jail. It doesn't matter if you're an aggressor or not. The court won't see the difference. Mary sighs at Jasper's explanation, tapping her shoe against the floor in an attempt to express her rage. Ah, oh, what a stupid law. Who even thought this was a good idea? Your reviews are sadly very much outdated. No court in this country recognizes that his actions are just, and no lawyer will be able to defend if he has discovered he was involved in any capacity. The Drake turns to face you once again, an irate look in his eyes. As well, it was quite clear with you yesterday that you were to avoid any and all confrontations at all costs. And look at what you've done. I don't know what you were hoping to achieve there, but I hope you're proud of yourself. Not everyone could sink an entire company's image and reputation as consistently and effortlessly as you. As much as it pains you to say it, Jasper's perfectly right. You really did jump the gun yesterday. You thought it would have been fine because of what Mary said earlier that day and because of your reasons for helping out Apollo. But you can see now that all you did was fall into yet another pitfall. If you knew you were only going to hurt yourself, perhaps nothing would have changed. But now that you could, but now that you know that everyone, including Mary and Natalie, could find themselves in trouble because of you, that's another thing entirely. You're right. I definitely didn't think this through. I'm so... Come on, Jasper. I told him not to be so harsh. 
Look, you're scaring the poor kid. The feline scientist steps between the two of you once again, a confident smirk on her face. Besides, I think you're exaggerating things again. Have you already forgotten our conversation from yesterday? Isaac is untouchable, plain and simple. Proof or no proof, involvement or no involvement, it really doesn't matter. There's nothing the FBI can do about it either way. You do recall her saying that back at her office the other day all too well. It's because of her words that you didn't think too much about your involvement in this mess initially. Jasper's words made you think for a moment that what she said did not apply in this situation, but judging by the pride in her voice, Mary seems to vehemently disagree. In case you need a reminder, Isaac here currently doesn't exist in the legal system. Until synthetics are stored out as either human beings or objects of our sentience, nothing that he does can be considered a crime. Hence, Bradbury's threats are all null and void. There's nothing any of us need to be afraid of. You've got to hand it to Mary. She's always standing by your side whenever you need her. Were she not here, you'd be at the complete mercy of the venomous Drake before you. Whose gaze seems to suddenly soften somewhat upon some pondering on the woman's words, much to your surprise. That much is true, I'll give you that. Wait, you're saying she's right? You didn't expect Jasper to capitulate so quickly, especially after the way he treated the both of you since this conversation began. You kind of expected him to keep professing your guilt until he stormed off your apartment in a fit of rage. You are indeed untouchable, but not quite as thorny as that moron thinks you are. It took only a second for the man's anger to burn bright in his eyes once more, much to your surprise. This time, however, you can tell that it's more subdued, more calculating. Like he's getting ready to hammer the final nail in the doctor's metaphorical coffin. Let's start of the obvious. The immune to law means nothing as far as PR is concerned. Well, please, we already saw this yesterday. The people are supporting Isaac, or will eventually. Not if they find out Isaac was involved in our all a brawl, they won't. It's one thing to refuse to comply with an officer not violently one time. But beating up three people, no matter the reason, is an entirely different beast. When people see how many incidents Isaac's been involved in as of late, the gears in her heads will start turning. They'll think I'm some kind of synthetic vigilante, or just a stray up thug. Those of them fear synthetics are just Kronos the next international level field name these theories. I don't need to explain what will happen to both this project and this company if that happens. You can't say you disagree with Jasper's prophecy. All these expectations are just as reasonable as Bradbury's objections from earlier. In your heart, you know that this is all just another ludicrous conspiracy theory, as is Mary. And yet, neither of you can quickly find an argument to counter Jasper's with. Well, let's say none of this happens. Say that the public's entirely supportive of our superhero over here, and the FBI is too lazy to bother arresting us for engineering another weapon of mass destruction. Not even that could protect Isaac from the flaws of any untouchable argument. Namely, the fact that our synthetics aren't untouchable at all. Once again, you have no idea what Jasper's talking about. What do you mean? Even you said I can't commit crimes anymore, so in theory I should be safe. And you are, yes. From the law. While you're still in the dark as to Jasper's true intent, the cat appears to be more or less aware as to what he's referring to. Oh, huh. so you actually read those papers I gave you. Now that's surprising. I have, because unlike you, I actually care about the finer details. And you know what I found? There's a brief silence as the Drake tries to steady his breath, clearly anticipating your reaction at his final argument. It's truly going to be considered a criminal as far as the law is concerned, but neither can you be considered a victim. Your little non-existent gimmicks works both ways, you see. You may be unable to commit crimes as you're not formally considered a person indeed, but because of that very reason no one can commit crimes against you either. But, but then... Anything anyone does to you for any reason is fair game, yes. Theft, assault, termination. These are merely some of the crimes you have no legal way of protecting yourself from. You are entirely defenseless. Oh no. The situation is even worse than you initially thought, and your expectations were already as low as they could get. Is Jasper truly implying that anyone could jump you at any moment for any reason and suffer no consequences whatsoever? That essentially means that you're a billion dollar living target for haters and poachers alike. Is there really nothing I could do if that were to happen? Of course there is. Be the ever living crap out of them before you do the same thing. It's simple. Mary's reply is swift and tactless, befitting of the jester-like cat, though her words sound more like a joke than a real answer. The tone of her voice leaves no doubts in your mind as to her seriousness. 
You may not be a weapon of mass destruction as Jasper described you earlier, but as an android, you still pack quite a punch. Nobody can mess with you, and if they do, they'll encounter much stronger resistance than they could possibly handle. Even ability bears will have trouble dealing with you. So as far as I'm concerned, you're perfectly safe in my book. Being unaffected by law isn't an advantage. It isn't a disadvantage. It's an asset. The feline seems quite sure of herself, that's for sure. At least for someone who unironically suggests you treat any would-be assailant to an extreme makeover. In spite of how absolutely preposterous her, word, her plan sounds, you have to admit that it is a viable option at your disposal. Oh, okay. Just uh, let me know whenever to stop. Yeah, don't worry. We're, we're finished this thing here with Jasper, and that's it. Awesome. It's not like there's much else that you could do to protect yourself, after all, especially in these times where everyone seems to have some reason or another to be mad at you. Needless to say, Jasper is nowhere near of the same mind as you. I told all the people who are going to freak out as soon as they find out what Isaac did in the last two days alone. Oh, chill out. As long as nobody finds out, everything will be fine. Though the lady tries to play that out as yet another one of her jokes, Jasper is far from amused, and truth be told, so are you this time. That is all you can say. Pray that no one finds out about this. This is exactly where you cannot be trusted to help this company, much less this project. And what are you going to do about it? Go cry the owners again? The Drake scoffs at the woman's retort, merely crossing his arms as he regains his hold on his emotions. As a matter of fact, I've already updated them on the situation yesterday. You... you have? You don't like the sound of that. Even Mary looks a little... it looks at least a little... Sh Even Mary looks at least a little shock... a little shook at this discovery. Of course. I did say someone had to inform of all the stunts you two have been pulling as of late. And that someone might as well be you personally. Isaac, too? Knowing that you're going to be involved is enough to put your, put your friend severely on edge. She silently bites her lip as Jasper delivers an answer to her question. That is correct. You don't intend to speak on his behalf in the event that he's called to explain himself, did you? What am I saying? Of course you did. You always... Jasper's rant is interrupted by a device, likely a smartphone that suddenly begins to ring in his pocket. Without so much as a sigh, the reptile turns tail and begins to head towards the door, denying the scientists the opportunity to shout back at him. Oh, that's a cleanup crew arriving. Right on time, I might add. We will continue this conversation in front of the owners. Right now, you need to focus on repairing the damages to the building. I advise the two of you to keep your schedules free in the coming days. When the owners come calling, you better drop everything and be ready to answer. With heavy steps, the drake makes his way out of your apartment, an ever-annoyed gaze in his eyes. I'd say we can stop here. Okay. Wow, what an yeah. episode. I was actually told by someone these days about uh, Jasper pulling out a phone, given that we basically fried everything in a two-mile radius. That phone should not be ringing. God damn it. Unless it's Fuck me. Unless it's a special uh, phone. It could be a special phone. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, that'd, that'd, be, that'd be stupid. That'd, that'd be a cheesy, cheesy cop-out. Fuck that. Uh, his, his phone is in a Faraday cage. Jasper, let's just pretend that Jasper got got fed up with with uh, with arguing with Mary and Isaac and was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go meet the cleaning crew or whatever, and that's that's how I how it ended. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah, he could be let, like. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, he could he could be like, oh, uh, the cleaning crew should be here about now. I guess I'll go down there and meet. Yeah, them. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not rewriting things again. You Jasper know and his mad Jasper and his magic phone. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, that was Fuck good. Me. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching this video, uh, reading the novel. Go subscribe, like, smash the button, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> oh god, thank you, Sid, for joining me, guys. You heard him here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.